great day, Attractive Thinker. Dr. Tony Hatton here, your Break the Cycle Specialist at TheAttractiveThinker.Guru. So delighted that you are back to join us for another episode of Beyond the Break, Give Yourself a Fighting Chance. Today, we're going to be talking about the process creates the reward. So many times we wish we could go back and say, I should have, could have, would have, if I knew then what I know now and all that jazz and we suffer sometimes with regret, I want you to understand very clearly that that process creates the reward. And if you change anything about the process, you also change the reward and you change who you are. Welcome my co-host to Shep Bradshaw. Great day, everybody. Happy Mindset Monday is such a great day to be alive. It is. It is a fantastic and amazing day to be alive. And we're here to support you, Attractive Thinker, in living life beyond the break, giving yourself a fighting chance, not giving up on yourself, living life beyond a heartbreak or a disappointment or a success or a life-altering moment. I want you to think about life after that. What is life like after the break? And a break doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be a, a break in who you are. A lot of times when we're trying to change, we're not just trying to change things, we're trying to change and become who we authentically are. And that change that happens within ourselves is a break between who we used to be and who we currently are, are moving towards. So there's, there's some, some tools that we need, some mental tools, there's some resources that we need, there's some clarity that we need in between those times of not being who you were and not fully being who you're going to be, there's a break. So how do you live life beyond that break? When we talk about that process, see, there's a process in between those two realms, that, that break. When you think about something breaking, you, if you have a whole pencil and you break it, now you have two pencils. There's some space in between where the pencils used to join. And that, that part right there is called the process because you, you don't have a whole pencil. You have a half a pencil in this hand and a half a pencil in that hand. How do you bring them back together to make them whole again? How do we become whole on this side of the break? You know, how do we become whole on this side of the success? How do we become whole on this side of life? Now that I'm a new being, everything is unfamiliar, everything is new. How do I become whole then? And a lot of times when we look back on these processes, we say things like, uh, if I knew then what I know now, or um, I, I wish I had the wisdom then that I have now. Or um, we look back and you know we try to think about what we could have done to change, or what could I have said or done to uh, make things better or make things different. So when you think about that, we're now intermingling with the process. We're now um, um, trying to change the past. And we all know that that will never happen. We can never change the past. Like, like you say a lot of times, Tashette, the two things we want to go into the past to get is the lesson and the blessing. I want you to understand that attractive thing because we go into the past and we start trying to, you know, um, change things or doing that shoulda, coulda, woulda dance and having all of those regrets then we stay in the past too long. And then who's living the present for us? Who's accomplishing? Who's uh, reaping the reward and the benefit of the present if we're living in the past? So I want us to think about this for a moment. We always say, if I could change one thing, or if I could do this, or if I could do that, we're saying, if I could. When you say, if I could, that means you can't. Or you might be referencing something that's impossible, like changing the past. I've never known, Tisha, maybe you can help me out with this, but I've never known anyone who was able to go back and change the past. Have you? No. Me no, either. I have not. I me have not either. seen anyone. Me either. So in order for us to feel that or experience that or say that, we're referencing something that will never take place. We're referencing something that will never happen. And can you imagine how much energy we can put into something that will never happen? It's a waste of energy. So in order for us to be free of that, you know, we were talking about this earlier before we started this episode. In order for us to be free of that, we want to go back and do our unfinished business free ourselves from the regret. And you don't have to, it shouldn't take 10 years. It may not even take 10 minutes. 
all you have to do is use your words and denounce certain things. I will no longer regret my past because especially if you like who you are now, or if you can look in your past and find, even if you can't find a whole lot of blessings, if you can find one blessing or one lesson, then it was worth it. Because so many times we try to beat ourselves up because of the past. And we say, well, you might say, well, I don't like who I am right now. Well, can you look back in that situation, in that process and gather one lesson that you learned? I think that would be worth the process. Uh, one blessing that you received, I think that would be worth the process. It's something that you got. That process wasn't null and void. It wasn't a waste. There was something that you got from that process that made you better. It's impossible to go through something and not become better as a result of it. And that better may not manifest in a way that other people see it or can recognize it. But we have to know it on the inside. We have to identify it and know it on the inside because that process does create a reward. Back to you, Tishette. That is so true. That is so true. The process does create the reward. And you're right. If we do keep going back, it will cause us to actually pump the brakes. It'll cause us to stay stagnant or stay still, you know, because when we keep trying to go back, we can't go forward and go back at the same time. So we have to keep trying to move forward. And the only reason why we will go back, like you said, to, to want to change it is because we're not happy with now. It, but now, after we did that challenge that we did, and you can see in the previous videos where we did a challenge where we say, if you got to go back in your mindset, you go back for the lesson and the blessing, you know, that you, you have to give yourself consequences because we want to build up that mental muscle that allows us to learn how to live in the now so that we can create a better future, you know, because your now is what makes the difference. Your now is all there is. The power that you have in you now, if you try to go back and change anything in that past, you can, you can erase one powerful thing that exists in you now that you might not, you might not want to have erased. So if you, you cannot erase the process without re erasing the reward, you know, if they go hand in hand. There's so many things beyond the break that we learned. And one of the things we learned is to forgive our past, forgive the things that we've gone through, forgive the process because the reward is greater than what we had to go through. That reward that of you being your, your, your highest you, you living your full potential, the greatest reward you can get from that is the loving of who you are and loving who you are becoming and letting go of the things that are behind you. Yesterday is gone. There's nothing you can do with that. So trying to backpedal with the coulda, woulda, shoulda is really a complete waste of time and it's not going to bring anything but frustration. So remember, we, remember we're saying we want to stay intentional and we want to build intentionally and what you focus on grows. So we want to focus on how do we understand and see that our noun presents itself as powerful and to accept that and that our past had its place. Our pet, you know, we can't erase the past. We can't erase what we went through. Like Dr. Tony and I, we have went through some tremendous circumstances and out of it is birth forth the attractive thinker and the visual encourager. And that is a gift in itself. Can you imagine watching something to its full, live out its full potential? Even if it's just a simple flower, watching it live out its full potential, watching you plant a seed somewhere and watching it live out its full potential. I imagine that that's how it is with watching any of us live out our full potential. You have give birth to these children and you watch them live their full potential. How much joy does that give to a mother? You say, this is my son, this is my daughter and she's this and she's that and you feel great. You feel like you had a hand in that. You feel like you, 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 you did something amazing. This is why he created us and saw us as good. God created us and saw us as good because he's already in our future. He already sees our potential and what we're becoming. We don't have the bigger picture always. That's what we're trying to get. So we can't make a, we can't make decisions based on limited thinking and a lack of knowledge, only having half the truth. This is why we are truth seekers. We, 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 we're trying to find, you know, ourselves. We can sit every time we grow, 
we're finding more and more out about ourselves and we're loving that even more. The good, the bad, the ugly, you have to accept yourself. The bad and the ugly, yes, you can take steps to, to enhance that, to change that, but who you are is who you are. You got to love it, with, lo love yourself regardless. You are worthy to be loved. Mm -hmm. You are worthy to be nourished, to cherish, uplifted, and cared. You are worthy to, you, you, you are worthy to receive the blessings that is in store for you. But how can you get towards those blessings? How can you get to the promise if you're always backpedaling, pumping the brakes? So that's what I believe in. You talked about Dr. Tony with the uh, pencil also. When you break the pencil and on one side, you have this, and on the other side, you have that. I was thinking about when you talk about a breaking, what's in you comes out in the middle of that breaking. So I like to think of maybe um, a piggy bank that might hold jewels or gems or, or anything in it that you put in there that you thought was valuable, different types of coins, things you collect in this specific piggy bank. You have been depositing and depositing and depositing gems and jewels along the way in your life. And so when you reach that break stage or that stage where you end up being broken, and you find yourself in complete pieces, all that's been deposited in you, that's what's coming out in the middle of that break. This is the gems and jewels that you want to take with you, not the broken pieces. We don't want to live life in the broken pieces. We want to live life and we want to continue to deposit gems and jewels. You get your, your gems and jewels and you go and you build something else. Those broken pieces, they served this part when it was whole, but now that it's broken, it's useless. You have to throw that part away. You chew the meat and spit out the bone. So that's what we're doing when we're going, when we're living beyond the break. We chew the meat, spit out the bones. We're taking our gems from our journey and we're forgiving our past. Back to you, Dr. Tony. Awesome. I love that. I love that. We're, we're taking our gems from our journey and we're forgiving the past and we're cleansing ourselves. We're releasing the past because it was a, it was our process. It was our process. It was who we are. You know, a lot of times we don't want to look back over that. We don't want to think about it. We don't want people to know about it. We don't want that to be a part of our history or, you know, our, our journey. But that process was necessary because without a process, you can't produce anything. I want you to think about making a cake, you know, to share, you talked about, you know, um, um, different processes that we can go through. I want you to think about baking a cake. And when you were talking also, I thought about, like you said, planting a seed, you know, watching something go to gr grow into its fullest potential. It's the same thing. I mean, you know, we talk about this a lot to share. We, to share, we say everything is everything. So the same process that a seed goes through, for example, let's say you're the seed attractive thinker for the sake of a seed and, and, and growing up a plant. Or let's say you're the flower, and I mean F-L-O-U-R in baking a cake. You're the flower. It doesn't feel good to be sifted, does it? You, when you're baking a cake, you have to sift that flour and you have to shake it and you're separating the part. It doesn't feel good to be separated from your parts, does it? attractive thinker. And then think about this, that cake requires not just butter, but melted butter. Some of those cakes require melted butter. It doesn't feel good to have melted butter poured on top of you, does it, attractive thinker? Or it doesn't feel good to have wet eggs on top of you. You know, you're, these eggs are being cracked on top of you. They're throwing cracked eggs at you in life. That doesn't feel good, does it? When you are that flour and you have that butter on you and you have those eggs and then you have all of this sugar on top of you you know all of you it's covering you can't even hardly see the flour anymore it doesn't feel good to be buried does it it doesn't feel good to be crowded out and smothered and suppressed and then you have you have to turn on the blender and then you have to be stirred and whipped and tossed and turned and mashed and all of this stuff is being blended into you all of this stuff is you're being transformed you can't even see you anymore and you're like oh my god where's my identity i don't even recognize myself i, I feel like mushy eggs and i i feel the grit of the sugar and this butter you know so slimy and greasy and then you 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 got to be slid into the oven 
It doesn't feel good to be heated. That heat gets turned up. It doesn't feel good to be that hot. But then you come out as this beautiful, you know, cake. You've transformed. You're still there. You may not recognize who you are. You're still there, but you've transformed into something that pleases everyone, something that everyone can benefit from, something that everyone enjoys and delights in. I want you to think about the seed attractive thing in the process. What is the first thing we do with the seed? We put it in the ground. Who likes to be put in dirt? Who wants dirt packed on top of them? Who wants to go that far? You don't, you're not just on the surface. We dig holes and then we put the seed down in the hole and then we pour all this dirt on top and pack it in and you're there by yourself. You, who wants to be alone? You know, there's a price to pay to be great, to step into your potential, to, to be successful. There's a price to pay. Sometimes you have to walk alone. Who wants that, right? And then on top of all of that, after you're in the dirt, you got to stay there and you don't even know how long. It's dark, it's cold. You got these little creepy crawly things crawling all around you. Who wants that? And then all of a sudden you feel water, you get hydrated. And then you notice a pattern every day at a certain time you get water. And then all of a sudden where you, where you were in the dark, in the cold and couldn't see or, or feel anything, all of a sudden you start to feel warmth. And you're thinking it's in that warmth that you're feeling is in the same environment that you were planted in, but it's not. You grew to the surface. You have to grow to the surface attractive thinking in order to feel the warmth of the sun because you can't really feel that while you're down in the ground in the dirt. But all of a sudden you, you realize you've grown. You're not where you used to be. So think about that, that process who wants to go through that? I wouldn't sign up for it. I wouldn't. We want the outcome. We want the reward, not understanding it's the process that created the reward. So when we say we want the reward, what we're really saying is, I need the process. I'll take the process. But of course, we're not going to say that out of our mouths, but I want you to understand, don't despise your process. I know, I know what that feels like to want to change things in your past. Wish you could have said something different or did something different or responded in a different way or, or, or answered or, or provided a solution or made a, made a different choice or went in another direction. We all experience that, but I want you to understand it's okay. You made it. It's okay. And that process created a, an incredible reward. And if you haven't discovered your reward yet, you definitely need to get in touch with the attractive thinker so that you can schedule a clarity session so we can get clear on what that reward is. www.clarity dot the attractive thinker dot guru g u r u clarity dot the attractive thinker dot guru so that you can get crystal clear on that defining moment or that break or a destiny moment or how do i process my process how do i discover the reward from my process because if you're going to go through something attractive thinker you don't want to go through it and come out and move on to the next thing and didn't learn anything did not just didn't learn anything, but didn't take anything out of it with you. Did, can't see how you're better as a result of it because nothing happens for nothing. And I believe this, even the things that we, we, we feel like are, are not favorable, we as attractive thinkers have the power to shape them and turn them into something that we can use, something that can be beneficial, something that can be a blessing. We can turn it into a blessing, but you have to have an attractive thinker eye for that and an attractive thinker heart, attractive thinker determination, the capacity of an attractive thinker to flip the script, say, yes, you know, this was out of my control. There was nothing I could do about it, but I can use it. I can turn it into something. I can see how I can, you know, twist it, flip it, reshape it so that it could be, it could be usable. So it could benefit me versus every time I look at it or think about it, it, it makes me sad or I don't feel so good about it. Your process is valuable. It's your personal process. It made you who you are. I want you to think about it. It gave you gems and jewels and ideas. You know, it, and, and not just you. Do you know, attractive thinker, that your process is not just for you, it's for others? 
when we tell our stories, we're telling our process. You know how many people get benefited from other people telling their story? How many people get healed, delivered, set free, get new ideas, uh, reach levels of success, ramp it up in their lives, all from hearing somebody else's story, which is their process. Back to you, Tashette. Wow. You know what's amazing is our story, there's not one thing we can erase from our story that could make up for where we are now. So while you were talking about a seed, um, and I was thinking that the, the when we first go in the ground, like how you talked about, and we're covered under that dirt, if you think about it, cracking that seed had to hurt. Mm -hmm. That's the one, you can't take away the cracking of that seed. Imagine you going in something where you thought you might have been whole at the point. You, you know, you you know you have potential. You're not quite sure the process from getting to being from being the seed to being a flower. And all of a sudden now you're in the dark. And then now you you feel you're out of shell. You feel who you thought you were cracking. You cracked, right? And I'm sure that had to hurt to be split into pieces like that. But here's the thing, let's say you're a seed, you, you are a seed to an apple tree, you're planted in the ground, you're cracking, and it hurt. Let's say you grew all the way up, and now you're, 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 you're above ground, you're finally getting to a position where you're starting to really take form of your full potential, and you regret the cracking. You cannot be a tree that bears fruit without that cracking from that seed. It had to take place. It was necessary for you. Being that seed was good, but remember last week we talked about going from good to great. Being that seed was good. Having potential is good, but we want to live out that potential and be great. And living out that living out that potential means accepting who we are. And Dr. Tony, you're right. There is a heavy price price to pay for trying to erase, you know, the things that we've gone through, trying to erase the process. There's a heavy price to pay also for not knowing or loving who you are right now. And the reason why it's a heavy price to pay for not knowing and loving who you are, because number one, if you don't know who you are, you'll start to try to develop in the image of anybody else. You'll start to pick up little stuff. You know how they say, if you don't, you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. When you don't really know who you are, you'll start picking up bits and pieces from different people. And next thing you know, you have compiled into this one image of everybody that's around you as opposed to you knowing who you are, right? And then you'll start making decisions out of that. And that's not even matching the potential or helping you reach your potential. You start making decisions of that. And if you don't love who you are, you'll start to try to shift and change it into something else because anything other than what I love right now will be good. So this is why it's important to know who you are and love who you are so that you can shift and change your life to match that so that you can reach your personal, unique, full potential. Each of our journeys are unique. You know, you can listen to Dr. Tony's story. You can listen to my stories. You can get different stories. You can get some of the same similar messages. And you, but you have your own message and we can't erase that regretting what's behind us. You know, when we're driving in a car, we don't drive looking out the rear view mirror. We drive going forward, looking straight, but we have the peripheral that allows us to see everything around us. We don't become everything around us. We're still who we are while we're driving. We're going forward. We set the direction. Remember we talked, remember we talked about that, um, GPS system, that God positioning system, that system that helps direct you to where you said you wanted to go. You set the destination and that system is designed to help you get there regardless of whether you make a wrong turn or you get off track. It'll help you get back on track so that you can reach your destination at a good time. So when we're driving, we're going forward, we are intentional. We have our destination set. We're not doing this all day and, and look there's nothing wrong with looking to the left and the right to discover who you are even more or where you are you know but you who drives like this you're going to start going towards where you're looking so if you're looking behind you the whole time driving guess what happened you're going to end up crashing into something because your wheel is going to turn towards where your eyes is what you focus on grows so while you're driving 
Yes, you can look in the rearview mirror to make sure nothing going on behind you. If there's a lesson or a blessing that you need to keep going, but never should your focus be back there. Never should you focus so hard that your your whole life is is spent backpedaling. And I wish I woulda, coulda, and shoulda. Wish woulda, coulda, and shoulda is not I can. That's a difference. Woulda, coulda, and shoulda is past tense. I can is future tense and also present because you can right now and you will future. You know, so when you're doing a woulda, coulda, shoulda, you pumping the own brakes in your life. Where can you go with that? What can you do with that? You can't take that to the bank and cash it. It ain't nothing you can do to deposit it. It's not even a seed that you can buy. Woulda, coulda, and shoulda is just regret and it just gets in the way. It's weeds that come and choke up the flowers that you put in your garden so that you don't reach, you don't end up getting a harvest from the seeds you planted so that you can produce fruit. You don't want those weeds. You uproot those weeds. So that woulda, coulda, and shoulda, that's a weed that needs to be uprooted. So back to you, Dr. Tony. Awesome. You're right. Woulda, coulda, and shoulda are weeds that need to be uprooted. I have an attractive thinker assignment for you. I want you to just see sometimes if we find ourselves continuing to go back, into that process and with all of these regrets and you know wondering what could have happened if I did something different or I wish it had turned out different or better. Number one, I want you to understand that if you could have done better, you would have. Just like you are right now, attractive thinker. See, I had to learn that about myself. Just like I am right now is how I was then. The heart that I have, in order for you to wish that the, the past could be better, you must be a good person. You must have a good heart because everybody may not have those kinds of desires or even think about it. Some people say, well, you know, whatever it is, what it is, and it, it, they, that, that's what they deserved or that's what I deserved or it, it, it could have been worse. You know, that some people, they're not, they're not attentive or they're not concerned with their process. But because you have the heart to say, I wish that it could have, I could have done better or it could have been better or I wish I was there or I wish I had said something. That means you have a good heart. So I want you to really sink into that for a moment. I want you to think about that. And if that's how you are now, that's how you were back then. You had a good heart. You had good intentions. And with your best intentions, that was the best you could have done. So be grateful for that. You can't beat yourself up for being for, for, for something that you were not. Back then, I wasn't that kind of girl. Back then, I didn't know what I know now. So you, we always say, if I knew then what I, what I know now, but you didn't. So why beat yourself up for what you didn't know? That's abusive to yourself. That's self-abuse. I wouldn't do that to a child. I wouldn't tell my, my five-year-old niece, um, um, I wouldn't reprimand her or, or, or uh, 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 get after her for something that a 12th grader knows. She's only five. That, that's not fair. That, that's out of order, so to speak. So when we do that to ourselves, that's like abusing our five-year-old self because it didn't know what I know at 50. Do you know how long it took for me to learn this at 50? And I don't mean in years. Do you know how long I struggled? Do you know how long the sadness? Do you know how long the lostness, the feeling of, 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 of not deserving, of being unwanted or unworthy? Do you know how long I, I went through that process just to get here? I'm not even talking about years. It's a long time to sit in unworthiness. One moment of unworthiness is too long. It's too long. So why, why abuse or uh, 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 punish ourselves or beat ourselves up? That's a good one. Beat ourselves up. Why beat ourselves up for what we didn't know, for what we didn't have the capacity to do? Well, I knew better, but I just chose to do it this way. Well, that's who you were back then. And you, you came through that process and now you're standing in your reward. So don't regret that. All of that was a part of that process. So here's your attractive thinker assignment. If you find, this is only for you, if you find yourself 
regretting the past or regretting the process or find yourself always drifting back there trying wishing that you could have changed something or trying to create new scenarios well if it worked out that way i could have did that or they could have did that or i could have I, I left i stayed too late too long i could have left sooner or i, I could have got the job if i had you know did this quicker or if you find yourself keep going back there i want you to while you're there so since you're living back there I want, while you're there i want you to do this I want you to list the benefits, list the blessings, list the lessons you've learned. That's what you're going to take out of that. And before you walk out of it this time, I want you to close that door. And you can close that door with your words. The door to my process is closed. I no longer go back there for anything. I've already gathered my blessings. I've listed my lessons. And I'm going to take these and put them in my pocket. And I'm going to use these as I further along my journey. Because, you know, there's, there's obviously, if there were lessons to be learned, there are lessons that need to be applied in the future. So obviously you got something from it that you can use. You're going to need them again. So take them with you, those lessons. And when situations present itself again, now you have an opportunity to apply that. So don't keep going back there. You can't apply it in the past. In the past was the process to give you the lesson. It, think about that. If you despise your process, you despise the lesson and the blessing and the reward attractive thinker. So now that you have these tools, that those two lessons are for you to learn something so that you can apply it going forward. That's what they told us in school. We're teaching you this because you're going to need to know this when you get in college, or you're going to need to know this when you get in, get your job or start your business or whatever. The lessons, the quizzes and the tests and the, all the lectures that we learned were to give us the tools that we needed so that we can apply it to what's coming. So instead of looking at the, the process and looking behind us, let's look forward to what's coming and then thank God that we're prepared. We have tools and lessons and rewards and a process and blessings that we can apply to our lives going forward. So now we don't have to say, if I knew then what I know now, because you know it now for later for what's to come. So that's your attractive thinker assignment. I want you to write down <clears throat> the lessons and the blessings that you've gathered through your process. Close the door to your process with your words, using your words, pronounce that it's over, that door is closed and, and open the door to your future. Open the door going forward and apply those lessons and blessings going forward. That's gonna help you bring closure to your process. Sometimes our processes are so excruciating, like Tachette said. And, and while we're in them, we think they're so unfair. You know, I remember being in my process and I said, for what? Why does this have to happen? For what? Who can benefit from this? I can't see any good that can come out of this. How can this happen? For what? What is the point? I mean, I had to have this conversation, you know, with God, with myself. I had to talk it out because it did not make sense. But a lot of things that don't make sense make purpose. I want you to think about that. They add to your purpose. They create rewards. Your process creates your reward. Back to you, Tisha. You said a lot of things that don't make sense makes perfect. That is so, makes, um... Purpose, yeah. right? That is so true. That is so true because I feel like a lot of things are not exposed until we go forward. You say, why, why, why? It's exposed as we move forward. Mm -hmm. And as we move forward, you would think, okay, why now and instead of then? Because you needed the lesson. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Dr. Tony, because we are making changes in this earth. We are making we are making marks in this earth. We are in here to serve a purpose. We all have a job to do in this earth, whether you know it, aware of it or not. We all have a job and that's to do and take dominion over this earth. We're growing things, we're evolving, you know, different things are changing and shifting, not just in the physical realm, in the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the social and financial realm, things are shifting in the electronic realm. You know, there's a lot of things shifting and changing, but if you look around, a lot of the stuff that we hold dear to our heart today was birthed out of that cracking stage was birthed out of a stage that you didn't understand. 
I looked up some people. Did you know that potato chips was originally a mistake? They burnt it and the people enjoyed it. And I said, that was one of the things that people eat all the time. And they said, okay, well, here you go, you know? So there are so many things that you don't know that you are enjoying right now that came out of a mistake. And we're enjoying those things. So we can't get caught up in those mistakes. And I love that assignment because when you, when you sit there and you have to write out the lessons of the blessings, number one, it brings more focus to the lessons and the blessing. It takes more focus off of the things you felt like were for nothing. It takes more focus off of the pain and more focus on the, the, the thing you were giving birth to. You know, we often talk about giving birth to our dreams, goals, our life, giving birth. What about giving birth to our purpose and our potential? That's a process as well. That goes through a, a, a series of stages as well. Now, when you're giving birth to something and you're in labor and those contractions hit you, sometimes you want to jump out that bed and say, you know what, never mind, never mind. I know I wanted to have these kids and I'm thankful that I was able to carry these kids, but God, just please take this pain away from me. You might look at your spouse and say, you did this to me. And you might be so upset and regretting the decision in the moment but then you come to terms and say, oh, no, I, I'm, I'm going to push this baby out. And you end up, a woman's body is amazing. We end up being able to take that pain and we just bear down and be able to push and be able to do everything we do to give birth to that baby because then we shift from the pain to um, I'll do whatever for that baby. I remember when I was in labor, I said, give me what you got to give me because I had a premature birth. I was 26 weeks pregnant. So they had to give me certain things in order to help my daughter's lungs to grow. And I said, you give me what you got to give me to make sure she'll be okay. Because as a mother, you'll sacrifice everything for your child. You'll do whatever you can. I was willing to take whatever pain I had to endure in order for her to be here. As long as she was safe, I was, I was willing to take the pain. So when it comes to where you are right now, if you're taking a pain, it could be just contraction. You got to be willing to take those contraction in order to, per to, to push and birth forth your potential, your passions, your birth, your ministry, your calling, your power, your, you know, being able to walk into your anointing, your future self, your higher self, your consciousness, everything that was promised to you. In order for you to get, give birth to all of that, you got to be willing to take some pain sometimes. You got to be willing to go through the cracking, be willing to go through being rooted and grounded, which means sometimes you might look like you're going down instead of up. And sometimes you might not be the color you thought you were going to be at first. You thought you were going to be green, but then you, you ended up a different color in the roots. And then you, you know, you're spread apart. You're not all the way together like the branch that you thought you were going to be. And then you start budding up and you said, now I'm starting to look like myself. So now that you have broke ground and now you're above ground, you haven't quite sprouted yet. But now you're, you're starting to get a little bud. What does it look like to say, why did I have to go through that cracking and that dirt and get focused on what went on down in that dirt? What, what good is that going to do to focus on that? We got to focus on being able to bud, being able to understand that it's our season to go forth. It's our season to sprout. It's our season to be in the full glory and the full beauty that was created for us. We can't sit that it, it, it's, it's, out of, um, it's, it's out of alignment to focus on what went on in the roots, what went on when you was created the roots. You understand that you got the roots and that's it. But being conscious and, I mean, being conscious or being focused on the little pieces of dirt that happened and was clumped up near you while you were down in there, what's the purpose of that? That's not a part of you. That helped you. That's not a part of you. The stuff you went through, your circumstances, it's not you. It helped you. It's not you. It does not define you. You are not defined by your situation and your circumstances. You were already defined by you got, before you got here. You were already determined. You were already purposed to be great before you got here. So if you lost everything, that does not define you. That does not say you're a failure. That's that not equip for you to think that you are a failure. You know, what's that thing you said, Dr. Tony? You said, um, uh, favorable plus favorable, 
favorable plus favorable equals favorable, favorable plus unfavorable equals favorable. We don't do basic mathematics the way the world does it when you understand your power and your purpose. It all equals favorable. So everything you went through, if you lost everything, favorable. If you gained everything, favorable. If you're broken in the season, favorable. If you're coming up in the season, favorable. If you understand who you are, favorable. If you're just learning who you are, favorable. It all equals favorable. The whole thing is to go forward and learn what that favor means. That favor, that favor opens doors for you. Favor can go where money can't. I'm a, I'm a witness to that. I mean, I'm a testimony to that. Favor can open doors that money can't. Favor can keep doors open that you wouldn't even be able to on your own. Favor. That being favorable is being favorable. Favor, able. You're able to be favored and go in and, and live your full potential the way it has been made for you. Like Dr. Tony just said, you made it already. You might not see the manifestation physically, but if you think about it, you're not where you used to be. You're budding in your season. You can't give up now. You come too far. You're finally all together and out of the ground. You finally get to see where the rays of sun is coming from. You finally get to see where the drops of rains are coming from and realize that it's good, it's necessary, it's watering you. Why would we give up now? Because we're focused on what happened with those clumps of dirt that was on me for so long. And we got a nerve to think we're, 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 we're feeling cursed and you know less than blessed because we had a little dirt thrown on us. No, that helped you. Fertilizer, it was good for your spirit, good for your soul, good for your mind, good for your body, good for your future, good for you. Back to you, Dr. Tony. Good for you, I like that. Good for you, attractive thinker. Tashette, you said something about alignment when we, we, we regret and we want to go back and change things. That's out of alignment. When you said that, I was thinking, but this is what I want to share with you, attractive thinker, before we end this episode of Beyond the Break, Give Yourself a Fighting Chance. I want you to think about when we talk about that process, um, by default, see, if we're thinking about the regrets and going back in the process and what we could have changed and all this and that, that's a focus, a focus. That's, that's using our focus to uh, magnify that area of our lives. What if we shifted our focus and magnified where we're going and what we've gained along the way? Our blessing pockets are full. Our lesson backpack is full. We've gathered some things along the way. What if we shifted our perception and looked at the, the, the reward instead of the process? What if we focus more on the reward than we do the process? Because that's all this is, attractive thinker, is what we're focusing on. You said it earlier, Tashette, what we focus on grows. What we focus on the, on, on the longest becomes the strongest in our lives. So just like you're focusing on the past and shoulda, coulda, woulda, what if you turn to the reward? What if you turn to the future? What could you be focusing on with that? Oh, how joyous this is, or how fantastic and amazing this is, or how wonderful this feels. Oh, the peace that I have now. Oh, the balance, oh, the clarity. All the joy, all the, all the organizational structure that I have now. Oh, how much more I manage my time. Oh, how much more clear I am. What if we focused on that? How, how could we magnify that with the power of our focus? So attractive thinkers, you have your attractive thinker assignment that you wrote down in your attractive thinker notebook. I want you to write down the lessons and the blessings, and that's all you're going to take from your process because your process is creating your reward. So use those blessings, stand in them, bask in them, be grateful for them, and use those lessons, apply those lessons to where you are now and where you're going because your process is creating a fantastic and amazing reward for you. And I'm gonna leave this little golden nugget with you. It doesn't have to feel like it. I want you, don't, don't be using your feelings all the time as indicators of whether you're blessed or not, or whether you're going in the right direction or not. I know our feelings are indicators. We, we talk about that as attractive thinkers in one aspect, but this aspect of your feelings that I'm talking about right now, I don't, because a lot of times, see, I, I, wrote, I, I, I published a post a while ago, probably over a year now, greatness doesn't feel so great. 
So you can't use how you feel to dictate or indicate where you are in your life. Success doesn't look successful. I want you to think about that. And how many successful people you know, or, or, or you do, um, they, they have the perception of success and they're miserable. So you can't go on what you see and how you feel. You got to go on what you know. I know I've come through this process. I know I'm better than I was before. I know I'm greater. I know I've learned some things and I know that God's hand is with me. So you take what you know. So many times in my life, and one time in, in particular when I was giving birth to my, my third child, I had to go on what I know because the people around me, even the medical professionals didn't know what was going on inside my body, but I did. And I had to go against everybody, professionals. I said, wait, yo, no, wait, we're not doing this. I said, this is my third child. I know exactly what's going on in my body. I said, give me a minute. We're going to have this baby today. Let's do that. No, Miss Hadden, it's going to take some time. We're going to send you back home. I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to leave this room, this, this doctor's room, this, this, this bed right here, but I will be back. I didn't leave that hospital. I walked around that hospital. I went to the cafeteria, walked with my family. I was leaning up against walls. They was tying my contractions, and I made my way back to that bed. And I said, Doc, this baby is coming today. And when I gave birth to my son, the doctor came and stood over top of my bed, and he looked at me. I said, I was right, wasn't it, Doc? He said, yeah, Mrs. Hatton, you were right. I, didn't, I couldn't go. See, as an attractive thinker, when you know who you are, you can take a stand against anything. He was the professional. He has the medical degree, not me, but I know my body and I know who made this body. And I have a connection with God. And I, I, was, I was okay. I got my confirmation. I was okay. I said, God, whatever you do, this baby is coming today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not tonight today right now while I'm in this hospital because I don't have time to play games. I got to get this baby out of here. That's how I was talking. So you got to have that kind of confidence. And, we, and see that process is what gives you that confidence. You can't speak in confidence. You can't stand in knowing if you haven't been through anything. It's the process that gives you your boldness and your courage and your strength and that clarity and gives you the power to declare what's going to happen in the face of adversity, in the face of professionals. But you have to have, you have to know and you have to embrace that process. No, it didn't feel good. I'm not going to sit here and lie. The process doesn't feel good. And we were talking about processes, even the birthing of a baby. You don't want, who wants to go through that? You just want your baby. You just want your bundle. But there's a process to it. You can't bypass, bypass the process because the process is what creates the reward. Attractive thinker, I trust that you have gathered something today that you can take with you today, not for next week or next year or next month, but something that you can use today to apply it to what you're going through right now and help you get clarity on your process and your reward because you are much better than you used to be. You're more clear. If you're listening to this message, you're already an attractive thinker. If you've listened to this message throughout the entire message, because everything doesn't resonate with everyone. And some people may click on this video and click off of this video because it's not resonating with them. They're not on this wavelength, but you are. You understood everything we said. And that's what I want to say to you. Your process created your reward. If you need clarity, visit our website, www.clarity.theattractivethinker.guru and book a session with me. I don't have people that I'm going to refer you to. You're going to spend time with me, the attractive thinker, so I can shine the light on your process and help you see the reward. To share, tell our audience how they can get in touch with you, the visual encourager. Absolutely. You can find me on my website at www.visualencouragement.com. We provide mental support for people who are already in motion, who desires to create a new vision for themselves. You can go to my contact us page, put your information in, let me know how I can encourage you, uplift you, and enlighten you so that you can live a life of fulfillment. That's www.visualencouragement.com.
Awesome. Attractive Thinker, our life's work is to make your life better. Remember, it is not what you're going through. It's how you're viewing it. Think attractively, and we'll see you soon.